Hi, I'm Danny, and you're about to watch a new episode of CEO series with Alexandra Copos de Prada, CEO of Anapan and former CEO of Ana Hotels, Romanian largest bakery and hotel chains. Alexandra graduated from Princeton and Harvard and is one of the founders of Aspire Academy. She's one of the most compassionate CEOs that I know, has amazing people skills, a strong sense of design, and ability to create great customer experiences. It's always a pleasure to discuss with her, so I hope you'll enjoy this interview as well. Thank you very much. I will start with a book that had um, an impact on my foundation, and I would say one of my favorite writers is called Ayn Rand. Um, she wrote two books, um, Atlas Shrugged and The Fountainhead. And I especially like these two books because they talk about how powerful men and women um, can become anything that they want to, to, to become in life. Um, she also talks about capitalism at a point when, um, you know, capitalism, I think, was, uh, was under a big threat uh, during the Cold War. The second one, I think, um, that was important to my working habits and to becoming more productive is called the Rockefeller Habits. Uh, it's by Vern Harvish. And it's a step-by-step -step way about how you can organize yourself better in the team uh, so that you can become uh, more effective and more efficient. Um, I think when it comes to customer service, because we are in the, uh, in the business of delivering um, joy and uh, incredible experiences to customers, there are two books that come to mind. Um, the first one is called Peak, How Companies um, Get Their Mojo from Maslow. And uh, it is written by this guy whose name is uh, Chip Conley. He's not working for Airbnb, but he's actually one of the founders or the founder of uh, Joie de Vivre Hotels in the U.S., a very famous boutique hotel company. And then the second book um, is written by Tony Sien, who is the, um, the CEO of Zappos, and it is called Delivering Happiness. I think this one is more mainstream. The best advice that I received was always surround yourself by people who are smarter than you. So uh, the first thing that I, w when you join a company, take over a company, is making sure that you have the right team on board, the right people on the bus, as Jim Collins would say. And in terms of worst advice, um, I, I don't really pay attention to, to bad advices because um, I'm, I'm a type of person who, once I make up my mind, I really try and test to see whether, whether my hypotheses are correct and I'll just, you know, go for it. Um, but maybe one that comes to mind, it's well, when people tell you that it's far too difficult or, you know, you, you cannot do it, um, you're in a small country or this is a small market, don't even try to do it. Um, and that always uh, is something that... Um, I, I feel it puts you down, um, and I, so therefore I, do, I try not to pay attention to it and uh, you know, really go for my gut feeling and the market research that myself and my team are doing together. Yes, uh, tons of them, and uh, it's a trial and error uh, always, so I think you know, the more experienced you become, uh, the better you also um, uh, you become at being very productive and making your team very productive, but I would mention three things. So number one, um, what helped myself and my team a lot was uh, making the meetings that we have recurrent. So those meetings that have to be recurrent, uh, we put them on our calendar way in advance. Um, they have a predefined agenda. Uh, we have somebody who's taking notes. Uh, we have somebody who's um, talking um, about whether the meeting was run well or not. Um, so that, that I would say is the first thing. Um, and we have seen a tremendous increase in productivity from the team. The fact that product, projects advance uh, and nobody burns out. The second one is keeping a to-do list. Um, I review what I need to do each day early in the morning and I try to stick to those you know, three to seven different things that I need to do. While at the same time, I also keep a to-do list with things that I would like to do, um, but I don't have the time right now. So I think this one dec uh, significantly decreases, um, uh, I would say, stress. I would say that recruiting is probably the most useful skill. Um, so again, I, talk I talked about people before, but um, at the end of the day, it's the people that deliver the service, it's the people that create the product. So as long as you are able to get the right people with you in the company um, and at the same time inspire them um, to achieve things that um, you know, will be way ahead of, of all the other, other competitors in the market, I think you're in a very good place. So I would say recruiting and then inspiring the people who are part of your team would be the two, the, the two skills that I recommend. So let's see, advice for women trying to reach the C-level positions. Um, I'm actually, I don't know if I'm the, the best person to ask this because I never really thought myself as a woman professionally. Um, in, the, in the culture that I grew up and then going to college in the US and working in large companies, um, you never really, I would say, 
um, bump your head into the fact that you're a woman and therefore you don't see that there are opportunities that are open to you on the contrary. So I, I always felt that I was very equal to men. Um, but I would say if I were to come up with advice, I would say that you have to work harder than men, um, most likely. You have to be as vocal as they are. You have to argue for your beliefs as much as they argue for their beliefs. And this is something that's, um, that's already proven, that men already, um, they negotiate their salary better. Um, they are more vocal when it comes to meetings um, and conversations with their boss. So I think, you know, women need to learn that it's okay um, to, to take a similar approach uh, as, as men do. I think you also have to be a, as good a, as net, a networker as men are, um, and also um, maybe you know get good at sports, um, so you can you know play along and tag along whenever there's a there's a boy outing. So what do I look for when hiring somebody? Um, a couple of things. So number one, I would say um, the person needs to have a good personal fit with the team. One of our main values is team spirit, um, and we hire people that we like to work with. Uh, we're also very flexible, but you know you have to have that. I would say human interaction and emotional intelligence um, that will make the team stronger. Um, secondly, I would say enthusiasm. Um, that's actually our first core value. Um, the idea that nothing is impossible and you know, you're willing to give it a try. Uh, thirdly, of course, it's intelligence, um, that you're able to solve complex problems and think about things in a much more creative way. Um, ambition, you know, it's, that's about hard work. Um, structure, I, I'm a structured person myself and I like somebody who is able to organize their thoughts um, and present them in a, in a, concise, um, in a concise manner. And um, probably uh, finally, which is also very important, is honesty and integrity. Um, of course, we want to work with people around us who we would trust and um, who uh, would always bring a, a good value um, and a, a, a trustworthiness, I would say, layer to the company. I think that's essential and that's definitely the base. So when you're young, I feel you go 24 seven. Um, I never disconnected when I was very young. Uh, actually, my nickname uh, when I was maybe 16 years old was uh, Duracell. Um, they had a commercial at that time with a little bunny um, that was always doing things and would never, you know, would never shut, shut down. Uh, so I think the one skill that I learned um, once, you, once you take on more responsibility is actually the importance of disconnecting. And not only myself, but also allowing the team to disconnect. And I think once, once you achieve this, then you, your mind is much more focused on how you cr can create bigger value, how you can think about strategy, and you also become much more creative. So I would say that disconnecting, taking that time off when you get at home, um, you know, to spend time with friends or family, um, having a couple of hours or a day over the weekend uh, to do things that are, um, that are meant to be for you and for your, for your family, I think that, that would be uh, something that I would totally recommend. So I think it's very doable uh, and I think it's actually very exciting um, if three things occur. So number one, um, you have to be very well organized and plan in advance. Um, there's, there, there should be time for work, there should be time for uh, family and friends, there also should be time for yourself. Um, number two, um, I think it's essential if you have a supporting partner or friends, um, but I will start with a partner. and. Um, Number three is if whatever you're doing is something that you love. Whenever you love what you're doing, it doesn't necessarily feel like work uh, and you don't even necessarily need to disconnect that much, but it's something that feels natural to you and you're excited every day about um, going to work and you know, meeting, with, meeting up with your team and um, developing a great service or a product. I think people focus on designing a great customer experience um, even before they focus on the product. So you can have an amazing customer experience, you can have an amazing restaurant, a hotel, a bakery, um, a service that you're providing to people, um, that if, if, if the product is not right, um, it doesn't matter how good the experience is. So I first focus on the product and then on the experience. And then number two, uh, even we, if we have been working in this field for many years, I think there are experts in every single field. So for example, when we're thinking about um, upgrading our hotels or um, coming up with a new bakery concept, a new coffee shop concept. We always work with people who are you know, good architects and good interior designers. They might not necessarily know the operations of the shop, but this is where we come in with, um, with all of our know-how. So I would say that hiring, the, um, hiring those, the, those people who are experts in the field is, um, yes, it is a larger investment in the beginning, but I think it definitely pays off in the long term. Ah, so in hospitality, you know, um, 
traditionally has been a lot about how nice the room is, how comfortable the room is, um, and whether you, you know, you had a, a food and beverage option for your clients. And no longer, it's, it, it's no longer the case that people are just looking for room and board, as we would call it. People are looking for a greater experience, so something that they could remember and something that uh, you know, they could take home and really share, whether they travel for business or whether they travel for leisure. Um, so I would say that um, they expect to feel like home, so you have to provide that environment for them. Um, they expect, of course, to have great food, but they also expect to have um, experiences that would connect them to the local culture so that they feel much more um, uh, locals than tourists. In the bakery business and coffee shop business, I think it's a lot about, um, again, go, getting the right product. Um, and the way you get the right product, I think, is by listening to your customers, number one. So always be there and always try to understand their, feed, their feedback um, and ask them you know, how, how they feel, what are their, their top products, what else they would like us to develop. While at the same time also getting inspired from... I would say areas that are a couple of years ahead um, of our markets and trying to bring that novelty, that innovation uh, to the market. So um, when I'm thinking about products, I'm thinking about, you know, keep a thin, a, a thin layer about a thin layer of your top selling products so the traditional ones, but always keep innovating because um, people's um, tastes change and they always want something new. So why do I dedicate a lot of time to education and to our NGO that is called Aspire Academy? Um, I believe that education is uh, what made me and what helped me get to where I am today. Um, and if there's one investment that I would actually make um, in, in a person or in myself, it is education. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Danny.